Hello everyone, it's been a while since I've put a video up, or long format video that is. Uh, we've had a lot going on here at the monastery, and as you could probably see now, I've got a lot going on here. This is that um, solar-powered irrigation system I've been working on. It's not portable, this one isn't, but I'm still working on the portable one. But let's talk about, just real quick, this one and how I do a remote shutoff without using any programming. So no Arduinos, no circuits, none of that kind of stuff. This is a really simple shutoff because I need it now and the bigger system will be uh, worked on later. So I'm doing programming and all that stuff. And it's going to take about two months to finish that because it's going to be quite big. It'll measure water pressure, water flow, the height of the river and many things like that. Anyway, so what you're looking at now is the actual pipe going down into the river and then this dock thing that I built. Uh, I had to build it kind of out in the river, meaning I built it in the river instead of building it on shore, just so I could get it to work properly. And um, it was just me, so I had to have some way of doing that. It's very stable, as you can see, I was walking on it. But uh, we're moving, I'm not using, but we're moving, or we can move 300 gallons a minute. Uh, I haven't measured. Sorry, I had to stop because the wind keeps blowing. We've had a lot of rough winds here, so I haven't been able to record. You can't see it from here, but I'll do a, a close-up of it later. But we have uh, sprinklers running there and up there. So let me, let's get into talking about this remote shutoff because I think a lot of people sometimes get scared of of uh, doing things like this because it seems like it should be a complex thing to do. But I won't get into the controller. This is the the actual pump controller done by Sun Pumps. Um, I'm having some issues with this controller now. Been working on it for about a month. I'm going to get a hold of them again and see if we can solve this problem. But it works. It's just that uh, there's a few problems that need to be dealt with. Anyway, up here are some options. One of them is low water, and the other one's remote stop. And I'm using the remote stop option, and it's traveling down this um, thermostat wire. So if you cross the ground and RS, remote stop, it turns off the pump. And I can't show it to you right now, but I'll see if I can get a, a quick video of me doing that um, on my cell phone that I'm recording this on right now, um, of how this works on this play. So let me go inside and show you the other end of this wire. There's nothing much here, just red, white, going to ground and RS. But yes, this is the control system. This is the uh, fuses. Goes into here and then goes over to this. Now this is something that you won't see on most systems. This is a waterproof box. And it goes to a 50 amp plug and that allows me to remove the pump right now it is uh, running through this water hose all the wires are running through the water hose out to the pump and i did that because this isn't the permanent installation that pump is going to go inside the little house i'm going to show you but we're still working on a few things so this allows me to remove it and uh, not have this cord running all the time through here because i don't know when we're going to get back inside to work on the pump house. Here's our solar array, 14 panels. These are gonna get put on the end. I needed four more, so I added them. I am um, using Ubiquity to get internet down here, and then I have a wireless access point inside. I'll have a video coming up later on um, installing this Ubiquity system. It's very cool. I thought before we go inside, I need to show you a few things here because you probably saw it already. Wait, what's that? <laughs> that is my evacuation pipe. So there will be a solenoid on the end of here that will evacuate all the water that's in this pipe, especially at the beginning of spring and during fall when the temperatures drop below freezing. I will have a temperature sensor outside and when the temperature gets below 37, it will automatically open that valve to make sure this thing's evacuated. And there'll be several points 
throughout this system that are like that. Some of them will be automatic, meaning that when the pressure drops, it'll automatically drain it. And that's on places where there's a slope. And then there'll be places like this where it will never evacuate unless I open it myself because there's quite a bit of pressure on it. So let's go inside the little house here. This is our pump house. There's a view, better view of the ubiquity antenna. And you can just, well, you can't see it there. I'm gonna zoom in just to see. Let's see how bad this looks. Oh, you can just barely see it. Right there is the antenna I just finished installing. It is a ubiquity prism, rocket prism. I'll show a picture of that here. Here, some stuff I took out. This is not cleaned up yet. I've been rewiring this mess, but here is the switch and internet comes in and then goes to wherever it needs. I have a camera. I'll show you what that looks like now. Here's the wire to the camera here. Again, it's just above ground because I'm still working on this. this is, uh, then we have a camera up on the pole where the antenna is getting, or the dish is getting uh, the network in here. But the thing I want to show you is this little white box here. This is a Wi-Fi controlled switch. And you can see it goes to this yellow cord. That's all you need to know here is just that it's a Wi-Fi controlled switch. It goes to a yellow cord, which goes out here. And the reason it's out here is because I didn't make my wire long enough to reach out to the, uh, the panels, which are just on the other side of this, of the willow. In here, it's nothing big. All it is, is uh, the yellow cord goes into this transformer, which is a uh, 12 volt transformer. The transformer goes to this little box. And the only thing in this box is a relay. That's it. It's a relay. You have 12 volts coming in on this side. It turns the relay on. And then this has no power on it, except for the power coming from the, um, the pump controller, which is a very very low voltage and it's just sensing an on and off that's all it's doing so when you hit the on button on your cell phone for that remote switch it turns this relay on because it's a 12 volt uh, transformer connected to that 12 volt relay it then turns off the um the controller for the pump it's really that simple no programming needed a little bit of wiring but it's all fairly easy stuff that you can do you know we're not dealing with high voltages here this is all low voltage 12 volts uh the only thing you need to do is make sure that is indoors in this case it's in this box here this can be outdoor because this is a waterproof box As you can see i put these waterproof ends on it uh, so i don't have to leave it inside there the only thing that needs to be inside is that and if i didn't short the cord coming out of this i could have put all this inside and left this outside Okay, it's really, really neat to know that all this is solar powered. So no gas pumps or using grid power as we would call it, but we're actually, I mean, we're solar powered anyway here, but the amount of energy it takes to run this system would be uh, a little bit of a, not too much of a burden on our um, electrical system here because we're all solar powered. So it was easier just to create our own separate solar powered system here since we all know, or I know how to uh, set this stuff up. You know, we didn't have to hire someone to come in and do this. So this is where all the solenoids will go to uh, control our different zones. So there'll be I think I counted six zones. So there's three down here and three up there at the top. So we've got, um, you know, there'll be a four inch solenoid here, here, and here. And they'll all go back to the little pump house. And then we'll run a wire up there to um, those solenoids or that um, the section up there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch uh, I'm going to turn on the big field over there where we have larger irrigation guns. 
hold on a second. Okay, here we go. So, open that one up. And I'm going to turn off the section that I'm in now. And all of this will be programmed into the Arduino. So we don't have to keep coming down here to, to do this. And then I'm going to turn off the section up above. So really, we won't need a solenoid here because this is a main line going up. It's not a control point necessarily. But since it's easier to just shut everything off here than to go up there to shut it off. That's why we're using this. Otherwise, I will not turn this one off unless we're doing some maintenance up there. Now, there will be another, probably here, there will be a valve here or a T. And that T will control, uh, will have a solenoid on it. And that will drain that pipe, which is quite a bit of water. And it just sits here if I don't do that. So we do have to put a drain here. This section will be drained with the solenoid down there. We will have a problem here. There's a dip there and water can collect there. So I think I'll build a bridge and then we'll level, take a shovel or something and have the grade slowly go down from here. I think everything else is fine. Uh, Think we'll have any problems with pulling up there may be a little bit of a problem here i don't know i have to see i don't feel like opening that right now because it really shoots a lot of water up and as you can see this has only been running for about an hour and it is very nice and moist i probably won't run this section again for about another five or six days actually and in fact that section over there really doesn't need to be ran that long I'll probably run it for one hour and just cut it off now that I can remotely cut it off and then I'll let it run for an hour tomorrow and then come back down here and switch sections and go up there and then we really probably won't need to run anything for about like I said four or five days so I'll let you get a nice view we're going to switch over to these large irrigation guns you see them in the back they are a lot more efficient than these small ones. Uh, those only need to run them for like 30 minutes and the ground is very soaked. Whereas these, they need to run for, I don't know, at least an hour to an hour and a half. Well, that'll be it. Definitely it this time. Uh, I'm gonna go now and uh, get ready for Vespers and a few other things. Um, so, I don't know. We'll see when we get some more videos up. Um, I need to get some feedback from you all and what you think about just seeing what life is like here through my own eyes, that is, and um, content that you would like to see. Some of it I probably can't do at the moment just because it's hard to do that, you know, especially when it comes to liturgical things because I uh, do a lot of the, well, I do 90% of the, um, the music. I am the choir master here, so it is really hard to just pull a camera out and start recording. So I'll see what I can do in the future. It probably won't start until this fall, but I do have some ideas of some things that I'm going to do. Like uh, I hate doing talking heads where, you know, it's a camera on my face and who wants to see my mug anyway. But um, just talking about subjects of monasticism and um, what it's like living in a monastery, have some of the other monks come on. But uh, for now, my time has been taking up with this irrigation system, um, getting our network running, and uh, I'm just taking music classes. So, and a few other things. We'll be cooking pizza today, or tomorrow, this Sunday, Pentecost. Um, so here, go to this video here, and you can see some of my cooking. So, God bless you all, and have a wonderful Pentecost. I'm hoping to get this video up. Uh, you should be watching this Sunday morning on Pentecost. God bless. Bye.